Hello everyone, it's me again, the Royal Insider. As usual, I'm going to tell you some interesting stories about the British royal family. Let's start with the story today, shall we? If you are a dog lover, you may already know that Queen Elizabeth II of England is a fan of the short-legged corgi breed. But did you know that her corgi dogs are not only her companions, but also important members of the royal family? In this video, we will tell you about the interesting and adorable stories of the Queen's Corgi Pack, as well as the special traditions that she has for them on holidays. Queen Elizabeth II has raised more than 30 corgi dogs throughout her life, since she received her first corgi, Susan, on her 18th birthday in 1944. Susan accompanied the Queen on her honeymoon with Prince Philip in 1947, and then gave birth to a long line of corgis and dorgies, which the Queen has owned throughout her life. In fact, 14 generations. The Queen described her corgi dogs as family, and she did not leave them out on holidays. She gave each of her precious pups a personal stocking, filled with small toys and their favorite treats. She liked to watch them open their gifts on Christmas morning. After going to church on Christmas Day, the royal family returned to Sandringham House to enjoy a traditional Christmas lunch complete with roast turkey, potatoes, stuffing, cranberries, gravy and Christmas pudding. But the corgis also had their own Christmas menu to look forward to. The corgis enjoyed a special festive feast of their own. The chefs called it the Royal Corgis Menu and made sure that the meat was minced very finely to ensure no bones. The queen herself served the meal to her dogs and fed them in a strict order so that none of them felt left out. And the corgis may have caught a few other crumbs around Sandringham in December. Before the big day, the royal corgis often ran in and out of the kitchen to try to snatch some of the delicious food being prepared. For many years, the queen's corgis were photographed with her as she traveled from London to Norfolk by train to spend the holiday at Sandringham. The corgis were also close friends of other members of the royal family, such as Prince Andrew and his ex-wife, Sarah Ferguson. Fergie, as Sarah, Duchess of York is known, told people earlier this year that the corgis are a national symbol so whenever they chase a squirrel, I get terrified. But they are absolutely a joy, and I always think that when they don't bark and there's no squirrel in sight, I trust that it's because the queen is walking by. Queen Elizabeth values tradition on holidays, from sending more than 750 hand-signed cards every year. Perry explained that the monarch would start signing them during her summer vacation at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. To giving 1,500 puddings from Fortnum and Mason to her staff as a holiday gift, in addition to personalized cards and vouchers to spend on things they like, Perry explained. And like many families, Christmas is associated with certain movies. Queen Elizabeth has a favorite movie that she always watches every Christmas, Flash Gordon. Perry said, it's one of her all-time favorite movies and it's become an annual tradition that she looks forward to. When it comes to decorations, Queen Elizabeth kept the Christmas tree and other holiday ornaments until February 6. This is the anniversary of the death of her beloved father, King George VI, and it is a tribute to him that she has maintained throughout her life, Perry shared. After the death of Queen Elizabeth last year, King Charles wanted to maintain many traditions of his late mother. Perry said. On Christmas Eve, the family will open gifts and enjoy a formal dinner. On Christmas Day, after going to church, they will eat a multi-course lunch and play games like the word game that Queen Elizabeth loved. Seeing the whole family happy, laughing together is her greatest joy. In recent years, the Queen decided not to raise any more dogs, because she did not want to abandon her confidence when she was no longer here. She parted with her last corgis in 2018, when Willow and Whisper died. Currently, she only has two corgi mix dogs, Candy and Vulcan. She also often received a warm welcome from two other corgis, Muick and Sandy, when she visited Balmoral Castle. The royal corgis have become a national symbol and an indispensable part of the queen's life. They brought her joy, warmth, and loyalty. 
They also made many people love and admire them, because they have a cute appearance, a lovely personality, and a deep love for the queen. And like many families, Christmas is associated with certain movies. Queen Elizabeth has a favorite movie that she always watches every Christmas, Flash Gordon. Perry said, it's one of her all-time favorite movies and it's become an annual tradition that she looks forward to. So, you have learned more about the Queen's corgis, as well as the ways she cares for and loves them. The corgis are not only companions, but also witnesses to the historical events of England and the world. They are also the ones who bring joy and warmth to the Queen and the royal family. We hope you enjoyed this content and please share with us your thoughts on the Queen's adorable dogs. Hugo Segel is a nine-year-old boy living in Bern, Switzerland. He has a great passion for the British royal family, especially the Duchess of Edinburgh, Sophie. He always dreams of meeting and talking to her, but he also knows that it is unlikely to happen, because he suffers from a rare disease called Sanfilippo syndrome, a genetic disorder that causes neurological degeneration and reduces life expectancy. One day, he receives a surprising letter from the British Embassy in Bern. In the letter, he is invited to attend a special ceremony at Station X, where the Duchess of Edinburgh will be present to visit and meet people with disabilities. He can't believe his eyes when he reads the letter. This is probably the only chance in his life to fulfill his dream. He quickly tells his parents the good news and prepares for the next day. He chooses a smart outfit, brings a small gift of a green wool scarf that he knitted himself for the Duchess, and doesn't forget to bring his camera to capture the memorable moment. The next morning, he and his parents go to Station X. He feels nervous and excited when he sees a lot of people there, including other people with disabilities like him. He is taken to a separate area where he will meet the Duchess of Edinburgh. He can't believe his eyes when he sees the Duchess appear in front of him. She looks elegant and cheerful in a classic black shirt combined with a stylish cream skirt. She smiles and talks to him in a friendly and warm way. She asks him about his hobbies, dreams, and health condition. He answers sincerely and enthusiastically. He also tells her about his love for the British royal family and gives her the gift of the green wool scarf. She thanks him and wears the scarf around her neck. She says she likes his gift very much, and she also has a gift for him. She takes out a small box from her handbag and gives it to him. In the box, there is a silver ring with a green gem. She says that it is a ring of the British royal family, and she wants to give it to him as a souvenir. She also says that the green gem is a symbol of hope and vitality, and she hopes he will always keep his faith and strength in life. She also promises that she will always care and follow his condition, and she hopes he will contact her frequently. He is moved to tears when he receives the gift from the Duchess. He thanks her and hugs her tightly. He also promises that he will always try to live happily and healthily, and he will always remember this day. He also takes a picture with her to keep the memory. After that, he and his parents leave. He holds the ring in his hand and looks at the green gem. He feels a warmth spreading in his heart. He knows that this is a special day, a day that he has achieved his dream. He also knows that he is not alone anymore, because he has a new friend, a wonderful friend, that is the Duchess of Edinburgh, Sophie. 